On our next episode of Just Outdoors, we are going to make jigs, uh, all kinds of jigs. And we have Len Daigle here, Len, yeah, who is going to show us uh, his expertise in making these jigs. We're gonna take you from molten lead right to the finished product, right here. And so if any of you are interested in this type of thing and might wanna get into this hobby, uh, we're gonna show everything. That's correct, from start to finish, and at the end of the program, we'll give you an idea as to where you can buy the products uh, to actually uh, yeah. manufacture these jigs. So, stay tuned. Just Outdoors is brought to you in part by the following community supporters. Jervalin Hardware Hank, Deer River. Jervalin Hardware offers a broad selection of paints and sporting goods and a complete line of plumbing and electrical supplies. Jervalin Hardware, 108 Main Avenue, Deer River. Meds One Emergency Medical Services. Meds One provides mobile advanced life support, community paramedic primary care services, and education, event medical support, and consulting. Preserving lives and improving health. In an emergency, always call 911. This program is sponsored in part by Brood Awakenings Coffee House. Brood Awakenings is a green business with the mission to be a cafe where a person can eat every day and be healthy. Nurture your inner being at Brood Awakenings, downtown Grand Rapids on Highway 2 East, across from the courthouse. Hi, my name is Tom Chapin and welcome to Just Outdoors. This is a program to bring you the bare facts about the woods, the waters, and the wildlife of Itasca County. And today we have a special show. We're going to talk about jig making. How to make a jig from scratch. From melting the lead to putting it on the end of your line. And to show us how to do that is Len Daigle. Welcome to the show, Len. Thanks, Tom. Yep, and you've been doing this for quite a while. So tell us a little about your background and how long you've been doing this and why you've taken this up as a hobby. Thanks, Tom. I've actually done this for 40 years, and I started as a, obviously a young man. My dad had purchased a jig mold from Herders in Waseca, Minnesota. A lot of the younger people don't remember Herders, <laughs> but Herders was a, a huge company for outdoor type equipment like this. Yes, it yeah. was. And I did it initially because I love to fish. Mm -hmm. And I still do it, Tom, because I love to fish. And as I got a little, little older and the equipment got a little more sophisticated, so did the product. So today, what I'm gonna do, Tom, is I'm gonna take our viewers through basically three steps. We're gonna do the preparation work, we're gonna do the pouring, and then we're gonna end up with the finishing. Great, okay. And we're going to go through that whole process. We're even going to heat up the lead and the whole thing. And eventually, you're probably going to wind up, or hopefully we'll wind up with a product looks something like this. Absolutely. These are jigs that you made uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, they're just beautiful. And so you, you catch a lot of fish on these jigs. Do you, you catch the majority of your fish on jigs that you make, don't you? Yes, I do. And one of the things I found myself is kind of interesting, Tom, you get back to a landing and you've had a good day and people look at it and say, man, where do you buy those jigs? Yeah. And you say, well, I made them, you know? So there's a little bit of uh, self-satisfaction involved. Just another thing to add to the uh, enjoyment of fishing. Yeah. It's just a, to say you caught something on something you made. Right, it's custom yeah, work. Yeah, and a lot of these things you aren't gonna be able to find locally. I know the hooks that you get aren't locally purchased. You have to send for those. Most of you do, yeah. Tom. Local um, hardware or sporting goods stores do handle some of them. But when I get at the end of the show, Tom, I'm going to tell our viewers about the catalog that you can get and about the website that you can go to. Yeah. You can buy everything that you see here today, uh, either online or through a catalog. 
Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna start with you describing the types of hooks and what's needed for the initial preparation to make a jig. Absolutely. And these jigs are gonna be for also uh, walleyes, panfish, northern, northern pike, uh, lake trout, lake trout, the whole world, all different sizes, all different sizes. Okay, so why don't we get into this? Why don't you start uh, showing the audience uh, kind of what you're starting with here? I different sure types will. Of hooks. You know, Tom, when you make jigs, what I found myself is preparation is essential to a good jig. And what I'd like to show our viewers initially is the fact that there are two basic types of hooks that are used for jigs that are used locally here. One time, the most common that you find is called an Aberdeen hook. And this has also been known by some of our old timers as the wire hook. Mm -hmm. You know, you stop around a coffee table and you get some old timers talking about it and you say, you know, these hooks just aren't made like they used to be. <laughs> I used to be able to pull a log off the bottom. Yeah. Well, that's probably true, Tom, but they probably were not using an Aberdeen hook. No, not because that's a little thinner hook than some of the other hooks. Right. In yeah. the local sporting goods store, they probably only handled sure. this other type, of, you know, O'Shaughnessy because of the fact that it's a much more durable hook. Okay. You have samples of them here. I do, and you can just take a look. What I've done is I've actually displayed here a size 4 Aberdeen versus a size 4-0 O'Shaughnessy, and you can see they're much different. And they're the same size hook. Oh, but no. They're, well, as far as the number numbers. The, and that's the reason I bring it up, Tom. Okay. The number is the same, but if you take a look, you can see this is a much longer right. hook. It's a much uh, thicker hook in here. Mm -hmm. And it's actually got a little different uh, design to the bend. This is very much a rounder bend where this one kind of straightens off at the okay, top. Okay, I'm going to hold those up just to, just to show. It's, it's actually the same size hook in this area here. Yeah. But one is thicker wire and longer shaft on them. That's exactly correct. Okay, there you go. And I think it's important, Tom, because there are different industry numbers uh, to, to hooks. Mm -hmm. An Eagle Claw for their Aberdeen hook, the number that you see most frequently is both a 570 and a 575. And we talked a little bit about the curvature of the, of the jig being a little different. You go over here to the O'Shanty side, which you're going to notice here, as we discussed, is a heavy-duty hook. Um, it can also be zinc-coated if you're going to be doing some saltwater mm -hmm. fishing. A lot of times you'll see this. It's known for its strength. And I like this hook especially for northerns and lake trout because right. it is a very strong hook. It's got a uh, numbering system of uh, 630 to 635, most common. Now, you're going to find, Tom, there are a lot of different numbers for things, but these mm -hmm. are the most common that, mm -hmm. that you'll see. And it's also got a very sharp, sharp. point and a hook. hook right it's up called in this area here. It's called needle point. Mm -hmm. I tell you, Tom, it is very, very sharp. sharp. And that's what you're looking for when you're out there because that's the first thing that you, you want to get into that fish right away. Otherwise, Absolutely. you're, uh, you're going to miss them. Okay. Now, you use both of those hooks in your jigs? Oh, yes, both I do, Tom. You do, okay. All right. The thing that we should talk about is the fact that there are specific molds made for specific types of hooks. Right. And what you're going to find is that when you have an Aberdeen hook, it needs to go into a mold that is designed for Aberdeen hooks. Okay, you've got molds here. These are these are molds. These are molds, yep. And a mold is what? Well, it's basically a formation promise or a process, Tom, mm -hmm. where you simply take and put the hooks in there, you pour the melting lead in the top, and it actually molds the head on the hook. Okay. The benefit today is the fact that years ago when they made a mold, it had very generous tolerances. In other words, you could probably take an you know, shanty hook and put it in an old mold and get by with it. It might be a little rough, you might have to do a little extra trimming, but you could probably get by with it. Today, these molds are made with very, very fine tolerances. And so what you'll find, Tom, is you can't take a or shanty hook mm -hmm. and put it in an Aberdeen mold. Right, because the, the, the wire is too thick. That's right. right. So much thicker, so that won't fit in there it for this whale. It will not fit okay. in there. But there are certain molds you can buy for these. Absolutely. Okay. So Absolutely. you got to really pick your molds. you got to know what you're doing there. That's the first start of this whole process here. Right. What we're trying to do now, Tom, is help our viewers take a look at the fact that you need the right 
type of hook to match the type of mold you that go. you're using. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have heard people in the past say, well, you know, I tried to mold my jigs, and I bought the, the same size hook, I bought a size four hook, but I couldn't even get the mold to shut. Well, mm -hmm. the reason probably was they didn't have mm -hmm. the right style of hook for the mold that they were using. Okay. The next step I'd like to talk a little bit about is sizes of hooks. All right. This is something that's kind of unique. Uh, in Numbers the, are a little confusing to people on this, isn't it? You hit the nail right no, on the head. Okay. Made on, right on yeah. the head. Uh, if you take a look at the numbering system here, you'll see the bigger the hook here, this 4-0, this is the biggest in the example I'm showing you. If you go down to a 3-0, that's a little smaller. A 2-0 is a little smaller yet, with 1-0 being at the kind of the bottom of this sequence. When you go to the other side... Other side of zero. <laughs> the other is side. what you're doing. Yeah, this is 4-odd, 3-odd, 2-odd, 1-odd. If you go down to a simple 1, that is smaller than a 1-0. A 2 is smaller, a 4 is smaller, a 6 is smaller, an 8 and 10. So the larger the number, the smaller the hook when you get into the single number series. Right, exactly. And once you get into the odd series, the larger the number, the larger the hook. So, right. So if you're pouring, okay. Tom, yeah. and you're pouring with a big 4-0 hook, and you send your wife or significant other down to the uh, hardware store to buy you a size 4 hook, you in your mind have got a 4-0 hook, yeah. but she comes back with a size 4. She could four. be wind up buying this, yeah. Yeah. Right. So she yeah. bought what she told her to buy, mm -hmm. but it's, in, in essence, it's not a 4 yeah. These, these are more for larger fish, lake trout, northern pike. This is what we fish for with northerns, usually the four hook. Right. And a mm -hmm. lot of these jigs that work. In fact, these jigs right here that you made mm -hmm. uh, are all four hooks, I believe. Yes, so four yeah. slash zero. Yeah. So, uh, and also they come in stainless steel also. They do. You mentioned that. Yep. So, mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a, I don't know, there's probably something worthwhile yeah. with that. I you believe know, rust, so. Huh? You know, no rust, it'll last mm -hmm. a long time. We're going to take a look at these smaller jigs we got here, Tom. Right. Obviously using smaller hooks. Yep. And you can see there's different types of design as far as the head of the hook goes. You've got the, uh, the ball type, you, this is called the walleye type right here, and mm -hmm. this is the banana type here. This is the ball type. Mm -hmm. uh, no, excuse me, Tom, this oh, is the ball, ball type. Okay. This is just a, a, a name by the manufacturer, it's called a walleye head. Walleye head, okay. But this is a common one, the banana. Uh, yeah, this is what we've been using on Northern Pike, pretty much. And it is. Uh, one of the reasons realize. I make this type of jig, Tom, is the fact that with this rounded head on there, it tends to be less of a problem when you're in rocks and mm -hmm. places like that because it will sure. kind of bounce out a little mm -hmm. bit. And even weeds won't catch on there as much as it would a, a rounder head, too, yeah. I would think. But, so you got different sizes here, and according to the one through six here, these are walleye jigs, most mm -hmm. of them. Uh, some some panfish jigs, but you can also make panfish jigs. You do a few of those too, don't you? Absolutely. Okay, because you've got the molds. Right, and one of the other benefits of the molds today, not only will it tell you the type of hook to use, it'll tell you the size of hook to use. So really, if you just simply look at the mold that you're buying or using, you'll find that it gives you the exact information to make Virtually the mm -hmm. perfect jig. Right, it does right along here. Right along there. All the different size hooks and mm -hmm. what you need there. I think our viewers should also know that there are different styles of molds. The one I'm showing you right here is an eighth makes an eighth ounce jig, which is one of my favorites. This particular mold here will make seven different um, jigs, all of the same size. Whereas if you go with one of the other styles that they have. Um, here's my banana one, which is a good example. It has got the same style all through here, but they've got different weights. I mean, you're starting off here with a half ounce, down to here to uh, an eighth ounce. So a lot slower process if you want to use this mold if you want to make one size. That's right, so because you can only do one at a time. You gotta, when you go down and buy molds, you've got to know this. Absolutely. <laughs> and here's the other mold that I use uh, quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And this again makes the round head. And I would advise if someone is going to get into uh, making jigs that they would probably want to get this type right here. Only from the fact that you've got a lot of variety in sizes. Mm -hmm. now, I mean, you can get the, the large size clear on down to 132nd. 
So here you can make a large variety of jigs. Again, a little slower, you gotta do one at a and time. And you gotta put in different hook sizes there. That's different all. hook sizes, mm -hmm. right. But the benefit of different, doing one at a time is the fact that you only have to have one of the hooks in the right spot. Yeah. If you go here with the mold that makes seven different uh, jigs all the same size, those hooks all have to be seated virtually perfectly or it won't shut right. Mm -hmm. So that being the case, if you got a little bit of a crack like this, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah. So you got to open up and make sure, you know, find the culprit and straighten it all out on there. But I think, Tom, this kind of gives us our viewers a good overall mm -hmm. view of the types of molds that we have, uh, the sizes of jigs they can make, uh, the available hooks that are out there. And in our next step, we'll move on to actually pouring the jigs so you can see the actual jig making process. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Uh, there's, there's a lot, lot, of, lot to this. There is. Yeah, and once you get the jig made, then we're going to go on to the next process after that, and that's coloring the jigs. And you've got all kinds of ideas on that. We do. If you look at all these jigs, they're all different colors. And while it may seem a little confusing initially, jig making is actually pretty simple. Pretty simple once yeah. you get her down. Yeah, oh. and if you start off with just a couple different sizes of hooks, one particular style of mold, yeah. you can get started on a very positive note, I think. Another hobby that a fisherman can take up. That's right. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Have yeah. some fun out yeah. there. Sounds good. Okay, we're going to go on to the next uh, process here. Sounds good, Tom. Okay, now we're on our next step to making a jig. Um, something like this. Eventually we'll wind up with something like this, Lynn. Hopefully. Right? Hopefully. Yeah. Um, we're, gonna, we're in the uh, lead melting stage, you're actually going to pour the lead into the mold. That's correct. With, with the hook with in the, the hook. Mold. And what I'm doing here is I'm using a banana type or style of mold. And one of the essential things that you need to do when you're pouring is to heat up the mold. The reason for that, Tom, if you don't, when you pour the lead in, it'll only partially fill the cavity and you'll open it up and it's like, oh, you know, it doesn't work. Lead cools down real quick. Doesn't Very quickly. Four or five seconds, you're about done with what you can do it as a liquid, right? Yep, correct. Okay, where, where do you get your lead? Where does a person get lead for this? Well, I tell you, some of us can, you can buy lead. Mm -hmm. Okay. I always use um, old sinkers, uh, decoy weights, um, stuff you find in grandpa's barn. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't make a lot of difference. Yeah, even if it's got some impurities in it, that'll float to the top and you can take a lot of that off of there, right? And I do. Just get pure lead in there then. It's okay, so lead from anywhere. If it's lead, lead it's going to make a jig. It's going to make a jig. Okay. And what I've done now, I have already loaded a size 4 Aberdeen hook in here to make this. And I do it, I melt the lead this way time because I'm old fashioned. I've done it this way for 40 years. There are electric uh, lead mold units that you can buy, mm -hmm. probably safer than what I've got right here. Well, we're just using the, we're, it's a source of heat. We're using propane today. Yep, we're using propane. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I've got my uh, hook in here, I've got my lead here, and I'm simply going to take, and I'm going to pour the lead in this first cavity here, because that's where my uh, hook is at. Okay, Tom, you want to grab that mm -hmm. for me? So you can see there's lead on the top. I open it up, and there you'll see the jig itself. Right here. Yep, right here. Yep. So the next step is I grab the pliers, and I pull the jig out. And you can see it's solidified already. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's set to go. Probably almost cooled down by now even, isn't it? Well, so. pretty close, Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let me just set this, let me yep. put it on top of here. Yep, is that still hot? It's still hot. This top of the, this part here is called the sprue. And I don't know why it's got sprue. that. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. But what you need to do is you need to take your pliers and simply wiggle this back and forth. Until That's just the excess lead that was poured on top. Correct. Okay. And then what I do sometimes, depending on the uh, mold that I'm using, sometimes I'll trim this off a little bit um, you can see this one, this one here is just okay. fine. Mm -hmm. All right, looks good. So what I'm going to do now for the sake of our program, Tom, I'm going to do a couple more uh, jigs this size. 
because that way we'll be able to color them a little differently. We're going to be coloring them. We're going to be taking it right to the end here. Yep. So do a couple more. So here's uh, here you're putting in the the hook. The hook. Now again, when these molds are hot, you got to do this carefully because you know they okay. are designed that way. This is off now. Yep. You're going to want that. Heat it up again, don't you? Uh, probably not, Tom. Maybe I think not. there's probably okay. enough heat left heat in there to okay. do this. And I'm going to pour some in. Mm -hmm. Grab Better. that for me. Yep. Yep. Open it up. There's our jig. I'll take it out. I'll let that cool down. I'll take another hook. Stick it in my mold. Get everything in place. Okay. Now again, if it doesn't close tight. So that's the secret to this whole thing with the size of the hook, right, isn't it? Right, you exactly. got, got to have that closed there. Okay. Yep. So you so just, just take, that in slow. if I wasn't right handed, I, could, I could do it the other way, Tom, but okay. I just gotta got to do it like this. Okay, let's open it up. We got our jig. Now I'm going to take the sprue off these two. Okay. If I can get a hold of it here. There's a jig, there's a jig, and here's our Take last one. one. So we got three, three jigs ready to go. We do. Okay. And now, Tom, we're going to move on. We're going to do some of these eighth ounce size where okay. I can actually pour more. Now, than are you going to want time. that heated up? Yes, I am. So we're going to have to we're going to have to heat this up then. Yeah. Let's just stop that. It's going to take a while to okay. get this done. Okay. So we'll just go to the next process. We'll stop and get this heated up before we go on. Okay, now we're in our next phase. Uh, we're going to do eight jigs at one time. Yes, we are. Okay, and these are uh, walleye hooks, about the size of walleyes, right? About quarter ounce? Actually, an eighth ounce. These are an eighth ounce. Okay, mm -hmm. eighth ounce all the way along. So this is a different mold that you're using than the last one. It's all the same weights. All the same weight. And this mold allows you to make eight at a time. Correct. And so we're going to be pouring Eight molds at one time here. Eight jigs. Eight jigs. With yeah. Them, yeah. And then these uh, are already lined up in there, ready to go. They are. And okay. again, this style of mold, all the hooks have to be set perfectly or it won't close tightly. Now, is that warm enough now? It should be. Should yeah. be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'd Make like sure to show our audience the fact that when this thing closed tightly, there's no gaps in there. Yeah. That proves that you have the right size hook in there. Right, and it's seated properly. And it's seated. That's really important on any of right. this. Okay. So we're just going to so take it over go. here, set this down, and I'm a little old-fashioned. I use the lead uh, in a ladle like this. There are other ways of doing it, Tom. Oh, you've been doing it for 40 years, so. I have. I'm kind of old-fashioned. <laughs> yeah. But you can buy electric mm -hmm. um, units that will melt the lead just as well, yeah. probably a little safer. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our lead, and I'm going to simply pour along here. Sometimes I spill a little bit, so if I did, don't, if I do, don't be surprised. Looks good. All filled up. All filled up. You put that back on the heater here. I'll put grab that. Put that back on the heater. All right. For the next round. Now let's just take a look and see what we ended up with, Tom. Okay. Now show, turn that around for the camera. Okay, here are jigs that have come out of the mold. And I've got eight jigs. And let me mm -hmm. set this over here, I'll Tom. Grab that. You bet. Mm -hmm. And what you'll notice, if I just take these jigs and hold it right here by the sprue, and I can twist these jigs right off like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm, so, only, I'm only gonna take off four of them here, Tom, or okay. three. Yeah, That's so one. actually, uh, we thought it, maybe that wasn't hot enough, but it was hot enough. Yeah, in fact, uh, you can see some of these, there's a little, little yeah. spillage on there. Heat seems to be a real concern here. You gotta have everything pretty darn hot, don't you? You do. And for safety's sake, Tom, I'm gonna turn that off. Turn that off. one off, okay. Yeah. 
So we have got three 1 8 ounce jigs here. As you get a little experience, a lot of times the jig will come out just fine. I just happen to have a little bit of a spillage over there, but just fine. And that leads us to our final stage, which is now going to be the actual finishing stage of these jigs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of coloring here. You're going to be all kinds of different colors you can use. And I think the uh, what's going to come up here is a different type of paints that you use here. Pretty pretty neat stuff you got. It is. Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk about that. Now we're in the final finishing stage of these jigs. We have six jigs we're going to work with here. Um, some northern jigs and walleye jigs, three, three each. Correct. And yeah. we're going to be finishing means what? What do, what do you mean by that? Well, it's a good question, Tom. Um, years ago when they made jigs, it was kind of a process of painting. You'd start off with a base coat, generally of white. Mm -hmm. Let that dry. Like a primer almost. Then you'd put on your color. Let that dry. Then you'd put on your, the outer part of your eye and let that dry. Mm -hmm. Then you'd put your actual color in the eye and let that dry. Mm -hmm. Very slow process. You know, it'll probably take you three or four days to get it done. The industry has since come out with what they call a powder paint. And I think this ProTech that you're looking at here, Tom, is probably the uh, most widely used and probably the best known brand. Is this an enamel? Tom, I don't believe so. I believe it's a plastic product. Like an acrylic of some sort, huh? This uh, finish on the jigs is actually heat cured. So what happens is that when we color these jigs initially, mm -hmm. they are initially ready for use. You can use them right off the bat. But if you want a very hard, durable finish, you want to put them in an oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. Okay. And that makes a very, very hard, durable finish. And this, this uh, is, it adheres to that lead about as best as you can get. Isn't as it? good as you can get. You're not going to get it off of that. Off. The one tip I have, <clears throat> excuse me, is that when you use this type of paint and you put it in the oven, it's a good idea to have an old cookie sheet or something underneath, because occasionally you'll get a drip. Sure. And if that drip gets on the bottom of your wife's uh, sure. oven, mm -hmm. probably not a happy not, not camper. Not real good. Not a happy okay. camper. Well, the first thing, uh, we're just going to show them real quick here, and uh, it, it, you got to have something to hang these jigs on. Correct. Now, we've got a little item right here, and we've got a couple of jigs hung here. And the reason you've got to hang them here is because they're still wet there. It's, it's a drying rack, really. Of sorts, you paint yeah. them in a way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can count how many you got, you know, the whole thing. But, but you can make one out of a coat hanger real quick, And, and that's right? what I did, actually, for many yeah. years, yeah. So I'll just... Uh, I'll just chop this for you in uh, a chunk here, that, and it will go kind of like uh, uh, that. And that's basically all you need, isn't it? Yeah, Tom, what I do is I then take this and straighten it out somewhat. Mm -hmm. Then I will take and bend it like this, uh, bend it like this and hopefully get about the same length. Bend these towards me, mm -hmm. so I get kind of an angle. And again, these don't have to be perfect. Well, no, just something to hang the jigs on while they're, while they're drying. You, you just mm -hmm. want to lay them on a, on a surface. Right, and you'll end up with something that looks like this. Sure, and all you do is, there you go. Pretty inexpensive. Pretty inexpensive, <laughs> so pretty easy. It's pretty easy. One coat hanger. One coat that's hanger. That's all you need for something like that. Okay. So that's that's something that uh, you can add onto your repertoire as far as <laughs> making jigs. Okay. That's correct. Okay. What all right. Do, next. Okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to go through the uh, actual um, finishing process here. And one of the things when you use any type of uh, powder paint that you need to do is you need to take one sec, Tom. You need to take and stir it up because this is a very fine product and it tends to settle, okay? So you need to take something and mix it up to make sure it's gonna work. And I'm gonna mix up all three of these right now so I don't forget. It's really ground into a very fine powder form. Very fine Just powder form. amazing. And it, it does settle all by itself. Yeah. So you wanna take and get those 
stirred up a little bit. You know, uh, people are interested in cost on some of this stuff here, so what are you looking at? Some of this? Well, you know, Tom, if you're going to get set up from nothing to doing something like we're doing today, you're probably looking at $100 overall. To get set up for this? Yeah, mm -hmm. the jig molds run about oh, 40 to $50. Uh, the hooks generally run, you know, seven, eight dollars for a hundred of them. Uh, this type of paint here, or coating rather, runs about six, seven dollars a, a piece. And a lot of this can be bought, you know, purchased locally. Yeah, sure, but you can do hundreds of jigs in one of those. A lot of them, yeah. yeah. So. so what you do, and it's a pretty simple process, you simply take your jig head, and I just take a pair of pliers, Tom, and I put it on the back of the jig like you're looking at right here. Then you go over and you put it on the heat and you don't want to put too much heat on here. If you want to air anywhere. Well, six or eight seconds? Like yeah. That? Not you, even that, huh? If you air any place, Tom, it's too little instead of too much. Yeah, okay, look at okay. that. Now what I'm going to do, Tom, you see the back of that is still kind mm -hmm. of plain. The benefit of this type of finish is the fact that you can correct virtually any mistake. So I'm going to heat that up a little more. These larger jig heads take a little bit longer to heat up. Okay, the smaller the jig head, the less time you got to right. heat up. Okay. Now, when you first bring it up, oftentimes it looks like this one does. It looks kind of dull, looks kind of like it's got a powder to it. Mm -hmm. And so what you'll then do is you'll just take and put it back over the heat for a few seconds. And don't get it too close. You know, what you're trying to do is, in essence, uh, melt that finish that you've got on there. And you'll know it's done when you can see that shiny appearance to it. Mm-hmm. Okay? And we're even going to make that shinier, aren't we? Coming down Somewhat, right? yeah, because of the fact when you put it in the oven and uh, heat cure it, it's going to get uh, very, very durable and even a little bit smoother. Yeah. And there's some significance to having a shiny jig. I would imagine. I believe so. You mm -hmm. know, he had reflects the light a little bit better. I mm -hmm. think you got a more attraction. Person. Yeah, more Some attraction. Some fishy northerns, maybe? Northern pike? Yeah, okay. really. Right. I'm going to do a chartreuse. That's kind of a uh, favorite color of a mother fisherman. And this time I'm going to heat this jig head up a little bit more because the first time it was, uh, I aired on the side of too little instead of too much. But that's what you want to do because if you get too much on there, what then happens uh, is you'll get your drips in the oven. Okay. How many colors are there uh, that you can, I mean there's, uh, in, in one of these containers, because there are many multiple colors? Oh yeah. By all kinds though. Yeah, I've only shown you three here today, but yeah. uh, I believe there are a hundred colors. A hundred different colors. I okay. believe that's what the number is. Okay. This one here, Tom, was done, you know, basically the way you're supposed to do it. It come mm -hmm. out, it's shiny when it come out, it's fully coated all the way around. And that second shot at the heat is uh, where you kind of shine it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the third one we're going to do on white here. So let's just take this. We'll heat it up again. Hopefully get the right amount of heat on this. And you see I kind of turn it to evenly coat it there. Stick it in there. Bump the excess off. Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm going to put that back on to kind of... Uh, get that shine I want to it. Well, you're sure going to appreciate these a little more when you tie it to the end of your line, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and you can put anything, a, a, a minnow head, a, a, a sucker minnow, uh, anything. Anything. On the end of that. And one of the benefits of these bigger hooks is, of course, they've got bigger eyes. But as Tom mentioned earlier, the one thing that you do want to do is you do want to clear these eyes out before you put it in the oven. Because once it comes out, it is hard. Yeah. And I think people are used to buying some of these commercial jigs where the eyes are covered up with the paint. Yeah. And they're really a pain when you get out there. <laughs> and Literally. all of a sudden you gotta get this on there. Yeah. And you gotta have a, a remover of some sort or that's something right. to go through that eye. And these, if you do it right, you won't have any of that problem. Right, and that's why I just kind of encourage our yeah. viewers to yeah. uh, go ahead and clean those out. So remember now, let's reemphasize, we'll still have to go in an oven. Yes and no. You can use them like that. Yes. But they, they will not be as durable. You know, that, that heat curing process is the ultimate answer. 
I mean, they smooth out a little bit, they're shinier, and they as hard as can be. Well, you've gone through this whole process this far. Another 20 minutes in an oven is not a big deal. Not a big and deal. And that's just to kind of cap it off. Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's take our smaller one. Now, again, I'm not going to give this quite as much heat because it does not take as much. Yeah, well, that really doesn't take a lot of heat, does it? No. I tried a uh, hair dryer a few weeks ago, Tom, to see if that would work, mm -hmm. but I, I could not get enough heat. Yeah, this seems to work really well. Yeah. And uh, what if you use too much heat? It just... Well, it, too much heat, Tom, or too much uh, of your finish is going to give you a kind of a drip at the end when you're finishing them off. You'll yeah. look kind of like a football on okay. your jig sure. head. Well, you haven't done that yet. It works good. Now you're just going to finish that off a little heat there to yeah. shine that up a little bit. Yeah, that's right. And like I said earlier, if an error, error on... Yeah, look little, at that now. How that just came around. It was dull. Four seconds on there and she's nice and bright. Set to go. And that goes right on here. Okay. So let's do our chartreuse. Do One of more. my friends says, if it's not chartreuse, it is no use. My wife, on the other hand, Tom, um, uses a white and blue with a blaze orange eye. And it, well, it, it's, it's her opinion, Tom, that if they're not biting mm -hmm. on that, <laughs> they're, they're not biting. They're not. Everybody's got their thing when they're out there. That's so. right. That's but right. if you got your own jig, you can sure uh, experiment, can't you? you Every can. time you're out there. Here, let's try this, try that, and eventually you get her down. And, and there's a thousand different colors here you're going to be able to use. Absolutely. What do you, what's your opinion on colors on... Uh, Fishing. Well, as you uh, may have guessed, Tom, I've got some pretty specific You ideas. do. You're pretty uh, steady on that. Because there are certain lakes that I've found over the time that like, or the fish rather, like a certain color scheme. And um, This seems to be one of your favorite colors here. Oh, yeah. Now, that's not perfectly done, Tom, but it'll finish off in the oven. Okay. Uh, now let's do our white one here. One more. Uh, this white one, I'm going to kind of add a little extra to it because some fishermen like multiple color. And here's one of the ways you can do it rather easily. And I've got a blue here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a plain jig head, put on the white base, then I'll put on a little bit of blue. Okay. Okay. And I'll give kind of a mixture all over on the jig head, a uh, bluish white tint, huh? It'll be kind of, yeah, the, the tip, Tom, and hopefully the mm -hmm. part of the back will have the most of the blue All on it. Right. Putting a little extra heat on that. Doesn't take much. Okay, I've got the shininess on there. Mm -hmm. Now I'll simply take... Oh, you're just going to do part of the head, not the whole thing. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. And mm -hmm. try, try to get it somewhat even so it looks good. There you go. About that... Mm -hmm. Gives us our blue, and I'm going to, there. So if you can see, that's still a very shiny. Yeah, um, I see color. you got one over here, almost like that, a couple different colors. So you can really uh, use your imagination on any of these, can't you? You can. Now, the, uh, the final step is going to be to put the eye on here. And like I said earlier, I'm going to put an orange eye on this one because my wife mm -hmm. loves it. Mm -hmm. So let's just take and set that over here. All right, so we got three five-eighths ounce or half ounce and mm -hmm. uh, three-eighths uh, ounce, quarter ounce. Yep. Okay, now let's go ahead and put some eyes on here. And okay. uh, as you may suspect, Tom, I'm kind of um, adventurous, I think is yeah. the word. All right, we'll use that. Uh, when you put an eye on. And there are many different types of eyes that you can put on, on jigs. Years ago, about the only way you could do it was to paint them on. But today, you can buy you know, these flat eyes like you see here. Or you can buy a three-dimensional eye like you see here. Mm -hmm. And what I've found. You yeah, are, yeah. They're, they're three-dimensional, right? Yep. What I've found, Tom, is that for fish, especially northerns, they love these three-dimensional eyes. So you think there's a difference? Oh, I'm sure there is, Tom. Between uh, a no-eyed jig mm -hmm. and one with eyes. What you'll <laughs> find is the industry has actually 
adapted molds to handle these three-dimensional right. eyes. Okay. I don't have one yet. It's on order. But they have a little indentation, sure. so it's flat. Mm -hmm. So they fit a lot better. The one I'm going to show you today when I get to this three-dimensional, I'm simply going to use uh, super glue. This is the gel type that I like because it is, uh, well, it's not as runny. It'll stick mm -hmm. on there easily, and I can adjust it a little. You bit. have to use super glue, aren't these? Don't these have uh, adhesive, adhesive on the back? They do, but I'm just helping them, Tom. Okay. Yeah. You just, they're going to stick more. Yeah, but what I've found is if you don't put something on them, and again, this has been my experience, mm -hmm. they will fall off. Okay. So, for the sake of uh, this particular jig here, I think I'm going to put on this silver color here. Uh, the reason I'm going to do that is that I think it'll look good on that jig. Why don't you hand me that knife of yours, Tom? Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that on there, and I'm going to take my gel type super glue and I'm going to put a little bit on there. It doesn't take much, a little bit, I kind of work it around a little bit. Then I take my jig and I put that eye on there um, about in the right place. It doesn't have to be perfect because I can move that if I can get that for you a little bit. Then I just press it down so it adheres mm -hmm. firmly on there. So now we're going to do the other side. And let me take off another eye. Um, do you leave those eyes on uh, while it's in the oven? Oh, good point, Tom. Thanks. I'm glad you brought that up. You put it in the oven first, don't you? You put it in the oven first. Okay, yep. we're assuming these are out of the oven. Ah, good point. Thanks. Okay. You assume these are out of the oven. Otherwise, I could see some uh, problems there. <laughs> yeah, there would be. Okay. And so now we're uh, we're getting toward the finished product here. Oh yeah. And uh, mm. there's probably one more step here be before we uh, put her in the water. Well, for this one here, it's going to be about ready to go. You don't uh, hit that with any uh, lacquer then. No, not with this one. I do, Tom. Okay. I, I do on the painted ones. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Okay. So but we'll I, do one of each here. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of rolling that over. Okay. And here is our finished product. Uh, you've got a jig suited for Northern's Bass, you know, those types of things. Mm -hmm. It's um, got a very good finish to it. It's got the eye yeah. on it, and it's, uh, for all practical purposes, yeah. ready to go. By the way, I'm sold on those. You know that. <laughs> I uh, know that. I've, I've used your jigs a lot. I'm a Northern fisherman. I like fishing Northerns, and those are wonderful. Uh, and one of the reasons is the shape and, and the weight. Uh, the weight is tremendous on those things. You want to get down there as fast as you can, and uh, boy, they seem to work really well. Um, and you can use a fairly good sized sucker minnow on the end of that, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whether you need the eyes or not, that's just, it just adds to it, doesn't it? It really does add to that jig. Mm -hmm. Gives it a little personality, maybe? Could be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and if you're making something like that, and here, this, and, and another thing is the strength of these hooks that you use. Uh, you're not going to break that off on most fish. Uh -uh. Stay on there. So and again, if I use a shami hooks, you yeah. know, those are even more durable than that. However, Tom, for the mm. ars walleye, walleye fishermen, ars walleye uh, there fishermen, are a few out there. Yeah, uh, I'm going to use this eighth ounce jig, and this is going to be a little different process. This is a little more conventional. And for this white base, here's where I use a little different product. Uh, I use appliance repair white. And my reason for that, I've found two things over the years. One, it's a very uh, dense type of finish. And secondly, uh, it dries very quickly. Mm -hmm. So what I've got here is simply a finishing nail, small finishing nail, Tom, that I'll take and dip into here. And before I do that, I think I'm going to turn this thing off because we don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. And here's where you take a little steadiness. Oops, excuse me. You just take and set that thing right smack in the middle. And you'll see it gives you your white base. Mm -hmm. 
So, well, it's uh, such a smaller jig. You can't. Pretty hard to use the eyes on there. Well, you could put eyes on there. Smaller eyes, but well, you could. But there. This seems to work better. Okay, I got another little white on mm -hmm. there. Now I'll set this over here. And for the sake of time here, um, we have put the white on this jig head here ahead of time so this white is dried. Because I simply want to show you the, the final process here. And here we're going to use uh, one of the conventional jig head paints that you'll see. And again, if you use these, uh, it's necessary. Oh, is that take, bright? That's yeah. a fluorescent orange. It is. You need to stir it up. Okay. So it, it does need to be stirred. And you can see I use a sophisticated, if I can say that right, uh, stirring mechanism called a farmer's match. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to use the same uh, brad here, wire brad, mm -hmm. and I should have cleaned this off, but I didn't. You probably won't have to, though. No, you don't have uh, to. Yeah. But notice how um, elastic this finish is. It stretches out long ways. <clears throat> I believe it's got a vinyl base to it, Tom, which probably does that. Mm -hmm. And so what I'll do now <clears throat> is I'll take and I'll put just a drop, and for this I turn it over to kind of get that uh, elastic. Threads. Yeah, oh, off there. Mm -hmm. So then you got your, okay. your eye on there. So let's do the other side. So you got well. fluorescent orange on white on green. Yep. Well, yeah. if that doesn't attract them, yeah. you might as well just go home. <laughs> Eat your lunch on shore and really? come back another day. Yeah, let's give it a try. Okay. <laughs> so let's get our fluorescent Okay. Okay, got that. Do you have any idea how many people make their own jigs? Not a clue. Not a clue. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I doubt if it's 5%. You know, but. but I tell you, it's a growing hobby. Yeah, it must be because of yeah. the products that are out here. I mean, there's everything. Now, one of the last steps you'll have in making uh, this type of jig here, Tom, is the fact that it needs an outer coating to it. Mm -hmm. And so for that, if you could do me a favor, Tom, and just go grab my clear coating over there. Mm -hmm. We'll just show them what it is. Yeah, well, sure. I, actually, Tom, I've got one here that we can stick it on. Okay. I uh, made this yesterday. And you would think this paint would be glossy in itself, but it's really not. And so what you'll do, I just use uh, a gloss, clear gloss, you know, type of finish. Mm -hmm. This is acrylic. And it's really no more difficult, Tom, than taking and giving you a little shot on both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all you have to do. That gives it a shine, and it protects that eye material from, you know, coming off, mm -hmm. being chipped off. But once we've gotten to this point, uh, we've got our final product. We've got our final yep, wall. Yep, there it is. And again... A lot of steps to get to there. <laughs> it is for yeah. that particular thing. But, but you get better at it as you go. Yes, you And do. if you can make eight jigs at one time yeah. in your mold and have all this process set up, in an afternoon you can do pretty well, can't you? You can make a lot of jigs. Okay. And the thing I like about it is you can use your imagination to no end. Right. The color uh, combinations, the weight combinations, the eye combinations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's just a world of things that you can do to make your jigs uh, rather specific. What uh, percentage of the time do you fish with your jigs? You probably, know, out of your probably 50 percent. 50 percent of the time you're using yeah. a jig and a whatever, a minnow or a, yeah. some sort of an artificial worm on the end of it or something. Okay. I am a seasoned jig fisherman. Jig fisherman. Yeah. Well, you do well on it. I've, <laughs> I've witnessed that. And uh, all the jigs that you make and uh, a lot of your friends that you go fishing with are using your jigs at the same time. Yeah. And so uh, they're, they're, you, they're, and there's all different sizes you can make here, which are really interesting because you could actually make some bass jigs here. Oh, absolutely. And so, in fact, we've used these on bass, mm -hmm. uh, largemouth bass. And uh, it depends on what you tip them with, but they, they work wonderful. Uh, very, very good item for fishing. There's no doubt about it. I mean, there's all kinds of other things you can use, but jigs are probably the top of the line for most, most really uh, good walleye fishermen. It's the biggest thing. 
No, you've got some area. Uh, you got some information on where you can get some of this. I do uh, information. <clears throat> and again, uh, Tom, if you could go grab that catalog mm -hmm. for me, <clears throat> um, I have found myself that you can buy uh, a lot of these um, necessities, these accessories, uh, locally. But if you can't, I have found myself that uh, do it. This company uh, is premier in having the types of uh, equipment that you'll have. Okay. And I'll take just a second and uh, open the catalog to show a couple of things. Um, as far as the types of uh, jig heads that are available, mm -hmm. uh, basically uh, your imagination is the This limit. is a big business. Big business. There's uh, probably more people out there than we think that are doing this. Uh, it's, it's something that any age can do. You can start when you're very young, yeah, um, right into your later years, and come up with all kinds of options. Correct. Uh, again, hooks, all different mm -hmm. sizes. These and are styles. the actual sizes of the hooks. So. Yep. Got the numbers on here. Yep. Here are the different types of eye combinations mm -hmm. that you can purchase, and here are the different colors of paints. Okay. Well, so you can see there's just a, a, a lot yeah. of mm -hmm. uh, opportunities for people. Yeah, great. And they also have got a website, uh, doit.com. So if you would like to order a catalog, you certainly can do that. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to go online and take a look at the uh, items uh, you know, on mm -hmm. your computer, you can do mm -hmm. that as well. Okay. Um, so again, I think it gives people a good opportunity to uh, get the items that they need and to basically get into jig making. Yeah, well, there we did it. We went from pretty much nothing, Yeah. all the components, and here's what we got right here. The final product. And yeah. that was uh, while we were trying to show people how to do it. So you can, uh, you know, I would think in a couple hours, you're, you're, you're going to be making as many jigs as you probably need for the summer. Oh, absolutely. I would think so, just in one day. And once you get started, then you just continue to uh, put variations. Different stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, impressed by the different size of hooks that you can get and the molds you can get for those hooks. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can you can go through every species of fish that we have in Itasca County here. I believe probably so. probably find some combination that you can use either with the color and the size of the hook for something you're going to fish around here. So, You're right, Tom. Excellent. Very good. Anything else you want to say? Not a thing. That's it. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming in. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Great show. Thank yeah, you. Appreciate it. And folks, keep watching Just Outdoors and stay informed.